What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community of Voices. Today, we got a very special guest. We got the Marion Fleming with us. Everybody clap it up. The Marion, appreciate you taking the time out for sure. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling well, man. I appreciate the opportunity and the platform. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so let's jump right into it. You know, uh, talk to us about like sowing seeds and what made you motivated you to start it. Uh, Sowing Seeds with Faith is an out-of-school academic enrichment program uh, started about five years ago. Um, I was a school teacher here in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, taught algebra and calculus in the school system and just realized that there needed to be more opportunities for boys of color outside of the school time. Um, I felt like that we can be a subsidiary to uh, the kids in school if we gave them some opportunities that happens after school weekends and in the summer. Um, so with that mindset, we started Sources of Faith uh, for tutoring, enrichment, and summer enrichment and mentoring. Uh, and now we've grown to be over probably the largest out of school enrichment program in, what, in Louisville, um, impacting almost 500 to 700 kids a year. That's beautiful, man. And we got, just got uh, Elliot joining us, too. How you feeling, Elliot? I'm feeling well. How you feeling today? How you doing? No, I'm blessed, man. Appreciate you. Definitely. I appreciate you for having us on. Yeah, of course, of course. So, you know, what does Sowing Seeds with Faith do within the community? Um, we have a few different few different things. Um, our biggest is out-of-school enrichment. Uh, so tutoring might be, is, is like the, the lack of better terms that most people are going to associate it with us. But I think for us, and Ellie can speak to this, I think the mentoring and relationship building is probably the biggest uh, facet. With that relationship and mentoring, um, you can build summer enrichment programs of 150 kids. You can build a tutoring uh, program of over 400 kids in a school year. You can have mentoring events of over 75 to 100 kids per event. And I think all of that starts relationship building. Elliot? Yeah, I agree. So when you talk about academic enrichment and a lot of the problems in, a lot of the problems in our communities, it's not, it's not a lack of ability at all. And I think that's something that we can attest to. I think one it is, it's a lack of resources. I think it's one big thing. And then I think another big thing is just a lack of desire because you don't see yourself in, you don't see yourself in school. You don't see yourself as somebody that has the potential to be successful based on how we socialize in America and how you learn in life. So, you know, just the biggest thing about the relationships and the biggest thing about the mentoring aspect of the organization and the, the social and emotional enrichment, the social and emotional learning, it enhances the academics because it makes you a more well-rounded and better person. And it makes you feel cared about. So in turn, you begin to care about yourself in ways that you never had before. So I think that's the biggest piece. So academic enrichment is the, like Demaria said, the staple of the organization from the outside looking in. But what makes everything come together is that social emotional learning, which doesn't happen through tutoring and through, it happens through tutoring, but not just through the, through the not just through the act of learning. It happens through the ability to build relationships, develop a mentor, you know, the, the organization is a big family. I think that's the biggest thing is it's a huge family. And I think that's the biggest thing that encourages the youth to succeed within the organization is because they don't want to disappoint each other and they don't want to disappoint themselves. And it's because of those relationships. Absolutely. It's, you know, you guys have that, that human aspect, you know, that you can't really, you know, it's not tangible, but it's just something that you just have to really connect with the people, you know? So, all the amazing work you guys are doing, right? So what are like the long-term goals for sowing seeds? Um, I think for me is to have a facility or a space that we could call home where our kids um, find a lot of growth in um, 24 hours, seven days a week, where they can go before school, after school, summer, all day, every day that um, speaks to their ability, access um, in a safe place. So that's the long-term goal. Um, and then to continue to do what, we do what we've been doing, build on top of that, um, continue to build uh, monuments um, that kids can utilize as bridges that they can go back and forth when it's time to do some networking and growth. Absolutely. So how has starting the organization, right, especially uh, being so like philanthropic and so much giving back, how has it impacted both you guys like personally? Um, me personally, I mean, I started this program, man, with just a thought. Um, it, it may be actually um, become part of the program. So I started something with a vision, but then I had to, had to also realize that I had to walk the walk and talk the talk. So I had to become a student of my own school, right? I had to look at it from the lens of, of inside out and what, what the expectation is so the kids can also relate. So DeMarion is doing it, so that's the expectation. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't live a certain life on social media or in the public and then go run a program. So I had to become a student of my own school and, be, and become a, a, a learner of my own thoughts. And it's 
it's round it's rounded me to become more um intentional um more methodical more strategic um and more um invested in just everything that i believe in yeah and for me i would say um so i didn't of course i didn't help start the organization uh i met demarion two years ago and that's that's around the time that i came on board and began to just be- become familiar with the organization mm-hmm. and really intimately intimately familiar with the work so um about a year ago i started working at Tinley, and i would say the biggest thing for me the biggest way is i would say changed me the big the biggest way i benefited is you know is it's made me a much better communicator and it's made me it's made me think less about my life and more about the lives around me, like i'm able to impact so uh there's a saying you um there's a saying that i heard once and basically what it said is you make a living by what you get and you live like your life is what you give so there's a difference between just your living and your life so just living an active lifestyle of giving and being able to pour into your community be an asset to your community so yeah. it made me more community focused and it made me a better communicator because i realized uh, you know, I thought I could just change the world just because of what I know and mm-hmm. the things that I've done. But it's, you know, what good is what good is what I have if I'm not able to communicate? What good does I have if I'm not able to give it in a way that can be received? So, uh, what what good is it if I can't work with others? So I had to become a better, better and more effective and consistent communicator, and it really made me um also just a lot more patient and understanding as well. So for me, I live a pretty good lifestyle. So I I would say I walk for walk, but yeah. for me it became it became more about, I, I stopped holding, I hold people to a high standard, but at the same time, I humanize the people around me. So I'm able to accept, I'm able to accept a lot more, forgive a lot more, and show a lot more patience, which is what I use me. So that's um, the biggest thing for me. For sure. And last question for you guys. So, you know, of course, there's always ups and downs when you're like dealing with, you know, giving back and philanthropy and finding the time and like, you know, the resources to make things happen. So what are like some of the main obstacles you guys have faced to accomplish your mission and then you know how do you go about you know overcoming those things um if we just being transparent uh, i think being a young black man in the philanthropic world mm-hmm. had its pros and cons for me um, starting this nonprofit. um i came in with a mentality i came in with a purpose and a passion um but purpose and passion doesn't pay bills either so right. I, I had to figure out a balance in a, in a way to keep that, that drive to stay hungry to never forget my why um, I think one of the biggest obstacles is fundraising. I think, you know, you got some of these bigger organizations, some of these bigger brands who have a lot more access and resources and, and a little bit more um, flexibility. And they're fighting for the same dollars you're fighting for. So think about a school like Ohio State or, you know, Florida a m or, you know, they're also nonprofits so that we all are going to the same people for the same dollars yeah. um, to make the same impact. So I think one of the biggest obstacles is fundraising. Um, and again, I think uh, I had to learn how to, what Elliot said, humanize people and, and validate people's feelings and let them know that even though they're, don- they're donors and give, they still people too, right? And the people do make mistakes. You know, a, a no today is probably a yes for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Understand that, you know, and sometimes you got, you have to personally say no to some good things to, so, so you can say yes to greater things mm-hmm. and, and understanding that that discipline and being humble enough to understand what's, what's for you is for you and is the time and it's everything. For sure. How about you, Elliot? Uh, I would say uh, I can't speak to the to the level that Demaria has because I don't do as much administrative work behind the scenes or fundraising and things of that nature. But I would say a big barrier is, um, you know, as an organization, like that I've seen with my t- my own two eyes from my experience is that a lot of people what they seek in life is control. So um, when you give people access to the organization and things of that nature. What they want to try to do is control how operates, control who gets in, who doesn't get in, and things of that nature. So, um, and the hardest, the biggest thing that I've seen Demarion do is, you know, stand true to his vision of being able to show kids understanding, forgiveness, and patience in the eyes of other other people, whether it be parents, or donors, or just anybody in the community who may think that, you know, people don't deserve the opportunities that they're given by Demarion. Now, people, uh, or you know, just different biases and things of that nature that people may have with the organization. So, yeah. just seeing Demarion stay true to the vision and. Uh, being able to support him in that way, that's probably, I would say, one of the hardest things because um, just being able to balance other people's perception with what you know is reality and being able to balance it too. Because in some instances, like in some ways, perception matters because mm-hmm. in our reality, people have to see the impact that you make to believe in it. You know, there are people, they have to see the vision for you to, for to believe in it. And a lot of times they have to see some type of product. But at the same time, though, 
they don't always have to understand the practices. They don't have to always understand the intricacies of why you do what you do, as long as you produce that, uh, as long as you produce that effective outcome. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I see that I've seen Demarion really do well at is um, staying true to his vision and not letting other people dictate what the outcomes are and how the program, how the process of the organization is. So, um, you know, he talked about fundraising, but I would say it's probably just um, not allowing people too much access. Yeah, for sure. And it's all about optics, you know. So people would like you yeah. see something, you know, something tangible with their own eyes before like they invest. So definitely with right. yeah. and you know, as I finished on JD Sports, you've worked with us in the past with the Youth Foundation. So super happy and glad you guys could find the time to you know work with us again, especially with this program. And you know, we love the work you're doing, that's why you're here. So, you know, we want to help you in your mission and donate five thousand to sow and seeds with faith. And we know that money will go, you know, a long way in helping you guys achieve your your missions and you know helping the people. So kudos Man. to you guys. I gotta talk to y'all. They, they, they didn't put that in the memo. Appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that. Appreciate yeah, that. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate the JD Sports and Finish Line for being invested in the black community. That's something we don't take lightly. You know, everybody paints logo with the brown the Taylor brush. Um, there's a lot more going on in this city. There's a lot more impact being made. A lot of other people, boots on the ground, who are making a big difference. Um, yeah. and we, we, we acknowledge and admire Brianna Taylor's family for, you know, setting, setting the tone. But we want to also acknowledge those who before Brianna and those that are still doing after Brianna Taylor, you know, and, and the stuff that, that their family was able to bring attention to. So we appreciate JD Sports to finish line for making sure they put, put an imprint and an impact in the black and brown community. That's, that's, that's dope. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you. Thank you guys again for taking the time out and, you know, spreading the message and, you know, getting the people involved and, you know, helping people understand what Sowing Seeds does. So. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks, I man. Appreciate it. You have a great day. You too. All right.